Quarantine with the Marine Quest team presents Water Explorers. This is Mo, the Marine Quest Goliath grouper. Mo practices physical distancing by staying at least six feet apart from others, eliminating unnecessary travel, and staying home as much as possible. Let's all be like Mo and flatten the curve. Have you ever thought about how amazing water is? Can you imagine what our world would be like without water? Let's explore the unique and amazing properties of water that make life possible on our blue planet. For experiment one, you will need a bowl or cup filled with water and two paper clips. Can you make a paper clip float on the top of the water? Pause this video and give it a try. Well, that was frustrating. Here's a trick to float the paperclip. Carefully pull up on one loop of the paperclip to make an L shape. Place your other paperclip on the flat loop. Carefully position your paperclip on the surface of the water and remove your L tool out of the way. Voila! How did we do that? Let's zoom in on a water molecule and explore. Every water molecule is made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Each hydrogen atom has a positive charge. The oxygen atom has a negative charge. Just like with magnets, opposites attract, and the positive hydrogens are attracted to the negative oxygen atoms. When two water molecules get close enough, they will stick together. This stickiness is called hydrogen bonding and is responsible for some amazing phenomena. Let's simplify our drawing. When water molecules stick together, this is called cohesion. Cohesion of water molecules will create a film or skin at the surface called surface tension. Surface tension is what allows water strider bugs to walk on water and our paper clip to stay at the top. They are not truly floating, but are instead being held up on top by surface tension. If you disturb or agitate the water, the surface tension will weaken, the skin at the surface will break, and the water strider or paper clip will sink. Let's try another experiment to investigate cohesion and surface tension. For experiment two, you will need a pipette or medicine dropper, a penny, a cup of water, and some rubbing alcohol. How many drops of water can you add to the penny before the water spills over? Give it a try. Challenge each other to see who can add the most drops. We'll wait, simply pause the video. Why were you able to add so many drops? Remember, water is sticky because of hydrogen bonds. The water molecules will stick together and cohesion and surface tension will cause the water to form a dome-shaped bubble on the penny. Can you do this with other liquids? With the supervision of an adult, let's give rubbing alcohol a try. Were you successful? Probably not. The rubbing alcohol has much weaker hydrogen bonds and is not as sticky. Without strong cohesion and surface tension, the alcohol quickly spills over the penny. Ready for experiment three? For this experiment, you will need a segment of wax paper, a straw, and water. Add a drop of water to the wax paper what happened? Water is sticking to itself and not to the wax paper. Use the straw to blow the water droplet from one end to the other. If your droplet breaks apart, try to get it to reform. Now for the real fun part. 
set up a race course on the wax paper and see who could get their water droplet from the starting line to the finish line the fastest. Remember, your entire water droplet must be intact when it crosses the finish line. Time for experiment four. This experiment will require adult supervision, safety goggles, two balloons, one filled with air and the other filled with air and water, and a lighter. Let's see what happens when we place a normal air balloon next to a flame. The air and rubber of the balloon heated up quickly and it popped. What will happen when we hold a flame to the balloon filled with water and air? I'm so excited. Why is this happening? Remember, water molecules stick together because of hydrogen bonds. Instead of the energy of the flame causing the water temperature to increase, it first needs to break apart the hydrogen bonds. These bonds are absorbing the energy. Because it takes a lot of energy to heat the water up, water has a very high heat capacity. These hydrogen bonds give water one of the highest heat capacities of any liquid on this planet. Heat capacity is the reason why when you go to the beach in the summer, the sand might get so hot your feet will burn, but the water stays nice and refreshingly cool. Sand has a much lower heat capacity than water and will heat up very quickly. The high heat capacity of water is why it is used as a coolant in the radiator of your car. Helps explain why coastal cities have less extreme temperature changes than inland locations and helps to keep our bodies at a constant healthy temperature. For our final activity, we will begin with a demonstration followed by hands-on experiment number five. Here we have a container filled with water. This barrier will create two separate water bodies. On this side of the barrier, I will add salt and mix to create a salty solution. While it can't dissolve everything, water is still considered the universal solvent because it can dissolve more substances than any other solvent on our planet. How does it do this? Remember, water molecules have a positive end with two hydrogens and a negative end with one oxygen. The salt that is added to the water is made up of a positive sodium atom and a negative chlorine atom. The positive hydrogen ends of the water will be attracted to the negative chlorine parts of the salt. The negative oxygen portion of the water molecules will be attracted to the positive sodium ends of the salt. This attraction will begin to pull the sodium and chlorine apart, breaking the bonds holding them together, and the salt will ultimately dissolve in the water. This blue food coloring will help us observe the salt water. What do you think will happen when I remove the barrier? Pause the video and make a hypothesis. Were you correct? The salty water now contains a larger mass than the other side but has the same volume. The salty water is therefore more dense and will sink down to the bottom. This is what happens when the fresh water of a river flows out into the salty ocean. The fresh water will go to the top. Unless we add energy to the system, such as waves or stirring, these two water bodies will never mix. Time for experiment five. 
For this experiment, you will need three containers of water, salt, a spoon, a tall glass, a pipette or medicine dropper, and three or more different colors of food coloring. Now it's time to create three different solutions of salty water. Make sure they have approximately the same volume of water, but different concentrations of salt. Make each salt solution a different color. Let's see if you can use your pipette to carefully add one salty solution at a time to your tall glass to create three separate layers. Pause this video and give it a try. Were you successful? Let's see if I can do it. By starting with the most dense salty solution on the bottom, I can then carefully add the next highest density solution and finally the low density solution. It's beautiful. We'd love to see how your Quarren steam went. Share your results with us by tagging MarineQuest UNCW on Facebook or using the hashtags MarineQuest Water Explorers and UNCW MarineQuest. Thank you for joining us for our Water Explorers adventure. Stay safe everybody and we hope to see you in person real soon.